so Google Plus is one of the social networks that's very valuable for marketing. Another one that we'll touch upon is Facebook. As I said, Facebook's got a very big audience, um, 1.8 billion people or so. But whatever concepts we have learned for one network apply to the other networks with some variations. The big idea here in Google Plus is communities. Um, Twitter doesn't have communities. Um, Facebook has groups which are similar to communities, but really um, it seems that groups have not taken hold like communities have. The closest thing that Twitter has to communities is the hashtag. A hashtag is a keyword in a tweet that is linked to other tweets on the same topic. So there's a sort of community that builds around then, around a, a, a hashtag. Uh, Google Plus has it very explicitly. Here's a community of people around a certain topic. Join it. And um, Facebook has something similar with groups, but they don't have the power uh, or um, fame of Google Plus communities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look a little bit at Facebook and how that can be used for for marketing. Now, Facebook has the ability to use to use it for personal or for business, uh, and in this case, Facebook really wants. Uh, personal content on a personal profile and business content on a business page. So there's those terms of profile and page. Even though that's very generic, technically a profile on Facebook is for personal use and a page on Facebook is for business use. When I teach the more in-depth social media class, one of the first things we do there is we make sure that the people that come into the class have the right kind of Facebook set up. Because a lot of times people come to that class and then they learn that they did their Facebook wrong. Because Facebook easily lets you sign up right here. So what a lot of people do is, this is first name, last name, I'll put the name of my business there. And birthday, that's the day we were founded. Well, all of this is about uh, personal. All of this is for a person to connect with other people, like friends or family, old classmates and such. This sign up here is not uh, intended for a business to reach an audience. And so technically somewhere in the terms of service, then you're violating the terms of service if you set up your business. You know, if I have the business Victor's Apps and I'm creating a brand new Facebook account as Victor's Apps. I'm violating the, the terms of Facebook here because I'm using it the wrong way. Worst case scenario is that Facebook deletes it because it's their website, their rules. I said I would adhere to the rules and I didn't so I could get shut down. And the big infuriating thing about all of these social networks is, you know, this is still to a lot of degree the Wild West in that it's my content, it's my picture, it's my text, but I'm running it on their network. To some degree, it does have um, precedence in the real world, as in, I'm going to say whatever I want on a radio station. Well, that radio station is bound by various statutes and laws that know I can't say what I want on that radio station. And what I've said, I own it, but it's on their radio station. They can shut me down, their TV station, etc. So these networks like Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, it's the same sort of concept. I have these abilities to share and post to various degrees, but I'm still on their network, and they have the right, because it's their network, and they have shareholders oftentimes, to manage it how they want. So here the way Facebook wants me to set it up is to create a personal account and then we can create business pages. It wants you to create a personal profile and then business pages. So um, for demonstration purposes, I already have an account that I'm going to use. If you want to try this yourself, you can create as many business pages as you want and then delete them. 
So if you've already got a Facebook, you can log into your personal Facebook, and then I'll show about creating the business one. If you uh, just want to use the personal one, that's fine, but again, personal is for personal matters, and business is for business matters. So I've already got an account I'm going to sign in. Probably have a bunch of notifications because I never signed in. I said earlier I don't I don't like Facebook that much personal, but for business I think it's very good for business. So I've signed in. It's my personal account. My name is on the top right corner. This is the personal account. And since I use Facebook also for business purposes for clients, at the top right corner, I have this ability, and everyone does as well. You have this little triangle at the top right corner. That's where they have hidden the log out button. But also on that triangle, I'm sure it's got a, it's got a name. But here, mine says your pages. And remember that pages are for business entities. So I'm managing here a few different businesses I can go to see more. If you don't have one of these, I'll show you what you need to do in a moment. But I'm just saying here, I've got a personal account, which then I can manage business accounts. Under see more, it shows all of the different businesses that I either I have created or I've been given managerial access. So um, the various scenarios are that I get hired by a client and I or someone on the team creates the business page for the client and then we give access to the owner and other people that may um, need to access it, meaning posting content. The other way is that the client had already set it up and then they grant us access. So because I've, al I've already set this up before for clients, I have your pages, see more. But if I've never created a page, I have the ability right here, create pages. This is also where create group is found, which again, I don't recommend the groups, like I don't recommend communities on Google+, because then you have to manage it and moderate it and all of that. What I will demonstrate is I'll create a page for my app development business. I've got my personal account, but then I can create as many business pages as I want on Facebook. So if I select create page from that triangle at the top right corner, I have various things that I can create here. A page for a local business, meaning like at a physical location. I can create a um, page on Facebook for a company. Let's say I've got the company Victor's apps. We don't have a page. We don't have a. We don't have a. You know, a street address on Main Street. We're we're virtual, so I can do company. I could think about also doing it for a brand or product. So each individual product or app could have its own um, Facebook page. Artist, band, or public figure, entertainment, cause, or community. So, in my case right now, I would think of either for company or product. That app is the product. I can make a Facebook page that focuses on that one app. Or I can create a company, which will be my app development studio uh, for all the apps. I think what I'll do is create these, this fictional company for the whole... Uh, I mean this fictional page for the whole company. So I'll go with company or organization or institution. I have to choose a category and a company name. So obviously company name, you know, Victor's apps and category. Maybe company or computer company. 
just go generic company. In here is the terms that no one reads but everyone agrees to. And in there somewhere it talks about how you're not going to abuse the system and you're going to use Facebook properly, what's properly, the rules are all there. And I'll get started. So you see it's a little bit of a setup. I can't dive into it as fast as I did with Google+. But the upside is there's a bigger audience that I could tap into here, 1.8 billion users, as opposed to Google Plus. If I'm being, uh, if I'm being liberal with their numbers, you know, they claim about 300, 300 million people. Uh, one, uh, one, one thousand million is better than three million. So, I have to jump through a few hoops, but it, it'll be worth it because I could reach more audience. Um, I have to set up an about for this page. It. Uh, has 155 characters where I can explain what this page is about. Again, that's like when I was creating a collection on Google+. I had written keywords there that people might be searching for. Uh, and here in 155 characters, I could write something like app develop and focused on Android devices, we create a variety of apps from educational to utilities, etc. What what might people be searching for on 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 Facebook? They want to download a new, you know, uh, fuel efficiency tracking app. And that's a utility or something. So I don't have here a spot to write five paragraphs. I barely have 155 characters. Later on, when I actually post something, that's where I can go into more detail. Just like I went into detail with posting my item on Google. Website, it says your, your website, like your homepage, Instagram, whatever. I could put here also the link over to the actual app itself. I've got it ready to download on Amazon, so I could post its its link. If I had a website over, you know, victorsapps.com, I could put that there also to guide people back to my um, back to my site. And depending on various factors, I may have the ability to create my Facebook unique address. So I could have facebook.com slash Victor's Apps. All of these things can be changed. And for me, because I'm just creating this as a testing account, it's not, it's not real. I'm going to leave it as, uh, as empty. And then I'm going to save that. profile picture. I'll want to add a profile picture of my company. And again, um, those terms like company, we created this um, fictional app development company and we're legitimate. We, we've created the Android, I mean the Amazon developer account and we're a business, we're a company. We're able to start to market ourselves as such. We don't need to go off and get a business license and a merchant account and all of that. We are able to start to uh, promote and reach an audience at this point. So if I had a logo for my company that I designed, you know, maybe Photoshop or Illustrator or something, I could add it here. I don't have one at the moment, but I'll want to add one as soon as possible 
And the reason for that is I want to appear like a real company. Spammers don't have the logo. Spammers are the ones that create an account and quickly want to reach an audience or target uh, target an audience, whereas us, that we may be more legitimate, we should fill in our profile most completely, like even simply a logo. So I'll add that later. Add to favorites. I can put a quick link back to this um, back to this um, page that I'm creating. I can add a quick link back on my favorites on the left side of the screen. This is just a testing account, so I'm going to skip it. And here's another one of the reasons why my own love-hate relationship with Facebook. I, I hate it for personal purposes. I think it's too intrusive. But for business purposes, I love it because that, that weakness for people, I think, is a strength for business. I want to reach the right audience. So here it's saying, here's your audience. Who are you trying to reach in Facebook? So Facebook, people use Facebook all day long, and it's been out for a decade, and it's gathered so much information on people that we can, that we can market, we can target to people. So from a business point of view, this is amazing because marketing marketing 1.0, they didn't have this. They didn't have the ability to target people as effectively as Facebook. That billboard out on the highway, the classic billboard has one advertisement that is there for a few weeks or months, and then someone pays for another advertisement. Well, the most modern billboards are those cool LED ones that change dynamically every five or ten seconds. So that I predict that the next generation of a billboard is that it will be able to change depending on, you know, uh, various factors like the, uh, the time of the year or even more advanced depending who is near the billboard. I don't know how that would work like during rush hour traffic, but um, as our technology permeates things more. I'm sure they're trying to develop billboards that will know what to show you that you will care about. Facebook's already there, and most of these social networks, Twitter and, and such, have the ability also for me to target my content directly to who would care. So if I had a business and it was on Main Street, I would want to target a location like San Diego, obviously for my app, I am global. Anyone with an Android device can download it. So a location wouldn't work here. Age range, if I'm building a certain kind of app, you know, an app that taps into the GoPro camera, I might be trying to tap into the, you know, a daredevil audience of 20 to 30 year olds. or in general, quote-unquote, everyone, 13 to 65, and up. Men or women are all, who am I trying to target? Um, depending on my app, I may want to focus it on a female audience, or on a male audience, or everyone. If I'm going to target languages besides the language not common to a region I've chosen, I can select a language here. So if I built a version of the app in Japanese and I really want to target it to Japanese speakers, I can target it there. And then the most powerful part here is interests. Uh, let's say I don't know what to type here, but if I click browse, there, there's all of these topics, business and industry. 1.2 billion people have shown an interest in this. Entertainment, food and drink, 1.1 billion. Let's say technology. If I open up technology category, I have computers, consumer electronics, computers, computer memory, monitors, servers. 193 million people have, have shown an interest in this. That means that people on Facebook that we're interested in computer servers, are typing about computer servers, are searching about computer servers, have clicked like on pages related to computer servers on, um, on Facebook. So all that information that we're 
gladly giving away on Facebook simply by using it, we as a company, as marketers, can use it ourselves to reach that audience. Let's see. If I don't have any good suggestion, I can go in here, like apps, Facebook apps, free app website. Android. So if I select, for example, Android, then it'll further give me better suggestions. Let's see, smartphones. free software <clears throat> so I'm targeting a few interests that people have on Facebook uh, that people may be searching for on Facebook that my business is about let's save that So now I've got a page. I've got a blank canvas to start to, to reach an audience. <coughs> so with this page that's created, I have the ability, like every other social network, to share something, to post something. I have status, which is text, photo, video, event, milestone, and other things. So if I say, check out a new exciting Android app, my XDCD. If I attach the, if I copy and paste the, the link back to the app, It'll create a little thumbnail for it with an active link. So here, um, this is a starting point. I am saying I've got this app available for people, but I'm not saying too much about why people might download it. <coughs> I'm not saying why it might be interesting to people or useful to people. And in the social media class, and my other classes, like the SEO class, we would spend some time developing a marketing strategy about how will I use social media to reach an audience. We, we're not really going to get into it in this class, but if you're curious, you can email me, and I can send you those documents to look at, or you can take the class. But um, the the short answer is I want to use these social networks to reach an audience. I have to always think in terms about there's an audience there somewhere. I just need to find them. I need to, to market to them. I need to think like them in that what would they be searching for? What would they need? What would be useful to them? So if I simply say check out a new exciting Android app, well that doesn't explain at all why it would be useful for people to download, so I can I have the space to go into more detail. Use it to keep up to date with classes at San Diego Continuing Education. Manage your class list and more. So now I'm thinking more in terms about why would people care? Why would people download? So that's a better kind of share and being more specific. 
publish that. I have the same problem here that I had on Google+. Uh, if I simply post something on Google+, like even a collection, my followers would see it, and if people explicitly search for it, that's a downside because over on Google+, no one knew I existed. And same thing here on Facebook, no one knows I exist yet. So Facebook has a way to, to boost the visibility of your content, to promote it to more people. When I teach this in that class, we spend a couple of days before getting to this aspect of Facebook. Because Facebook, the good thing about Facebook is there's so many people on it to reach. The bad thing about Facebook is there's so many people on it to reach, meaning you're a needle in a haystack. I'm now number 1,897,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
because that one dollar investment could have resulted in a download of my app, a sale of my app. What if I spent five dollars to boost my app and I got three downloads? And what if I'm selling my app? I got five downloads, 99 cents each, that pays me back for what I paid, those five dollars or one dollar or whatever. And um, this is marketing 2.0. That billboard wasn't free. Those flyers on people's windshields weren't free. Paying for the person to hold that spinning sign on the sidewalk wasn't free. Nowadays, Facebook for a business is not free. But it works. Again, I can show you results of clients before and after. You know, like uh, we deal with several different uh, restaurants in San Diego, and we can go to the client's cash register and look at their receipts. This is before we did our Facebook campaign and after the Facebook campaign that item sold more. Especially for food because that you know that food item looks really tasty. I want it. And then it shows up on Facebook, people go buy it. So some of these clients we are spending like 30 to 50 dollars on Facebook every few weeks or or month or so and it works because it then brings back double of what the investment was, sales and customers and such. The way it actually works is I can click boost and I've already got mine set up but if you do this for the very first time it'll look different. Let me just see... Okay, so... I won't go through the whole thing, obviously I'm not going to pay for real, but if I were going to for myself or a client, there's that post, it's going to be sponsored, it's going to be shown to people on desktop or mobile. Yes, there's a lot of people where they see sponsored and they ignore it, they actively don't want to see the sponsored things, but there's also lots of people that do respond to the sponsored content that is something that I care about, that is something that I want to download. Yes, it was sponsored, but it was something that I cared about. Facebook will tell you in the analytics screen how effective your money is, is being, how your money is working for you. So it's not like you're just throwing money at Facebook. Facebook gives you really great stats that tell you the time of day when people were active, the number of clicks on a post, the genders and all of that. So you can make very intelligent decisions that were never available in marketing 1.0. Yes, I can put a commercial on MTV at a certain time and I'll probably reach a certain audience. But this is like hyper-targeted. This is the future of marketing. And all the other networks are incorporating or ripping off aspects of it. Twitter has something very similar. You can tweet for free all day long and it'll reach an audience. They haven't implemented it that it's like necessary to pay yet. But if you pay for a tweet, it can be targeted and sent to more people that would care most about it. And some people will see it as an ad and ignore it. And others will see that's an ad that I care about, let me click. So I can set this up by adding a button to the post, like the shop now, book now, not a lot of setup, but let's say shop now. This sponsored post will appear and then there'll be the button shop now. My audience, I've already set this up before, so I've created these audiences, these segments, meaning techie people might be interested in this, organic food lovers might be interested in that and that is creating an audience. So for example, Android app uh, or and, uh, Android users. Gender, I can target. Age, I can target. Let's say I want to go 20 to uh, 50 year old. Location, well anyone can download my app all over the world but maybe it's really focused, like the app, this app, the SDCE app is focused for people in San Diego because we offer the classes here in San Diego. I could say US or I can focus it into 
San Diego. It's going to be this and all of these environs. I don't quite hit Escondido. So I can add Escondido, or I can increase the radius, or decrease the radius. And then interests. Let's just say simply technology, so I'll save that. Okay, so I'm targeting the Android users demographic. That's my budget. It's suggesting $20. But as I said, various prices here. Five dollars. Choose your own. So instead of buying that latte today, I could spend five dollars on Facebook to reach an audience. That'll be potentially 320 to 850 people on Facebook. I have zero followers right now. No one knows I exist. But for five dollars, I could already reach this audience. Or yes, I can even do it for one dollar. 96 to 250 people. That might be a very good starting point to let people know my app exists. That does not mean I'm going to get 96 downloads. But I'm building awareness for this app. And in the modern digital marketing, to some degree it's a, mar it's a numbers game. The more I target, the more possibility of downloads or sales or whatever. Uh, but we are able to target, which is much more difficult in, in marketing 1.0, in traditional marketing. For one day, Facebook will promote, will show my sponsored post there to 96 to 250 people. I'd say for, for two weeks. Well, now I need to do a dollar per day, so that would be $14. And at $14 for two weeks, Facebook is going to judiciously, it's pretty smart about it, showing this post to the people that would most care about, based on your audience. And that'll be about 1,200 to 3,100 people. Again, that doesn't mean 1,200 downloads. Maybe I only get 50 downloads. That's still 50 downloads. $14. Rat ad runs until whatever, so if I wanted more than two weeks, I can do that. Track conversions, that's a little advanced, don't worry. And then payment, a real credit card or PayPal account to pay real money to run a virtual ad. Sounds weird, but that's the modern way nowadays. Um, 1.8 billion people with all of these interests, people spending time all day long on it and having it on their phone all day long, and when they check in on a business, when they write about something, when they take a photo, when they do something on Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter, these networks are gathering all this information. And from maybe a personal privacy aspect of it, I don't like that. But from a business aspect, I love that because then I can reach that audience that really cares. So if this were real, I would boost it, and then I would see on my... Uh, I don't have it yet because it's brand new, but I would have... Oh no, it is there. Insights. They changed the name. It used to be called something else. But now on Insights here, it'll tell me Here's the number of views you got, here's the number of clicks you got, here's the number of follows you got, here's the time of day that people cared. We shared these different posts. One was a link post, one was a video post, one was a photo post. The photo post reached more people, engaged more people, engaged their actual clicks. So you'll often have reach in that people saw it, but then the engagement will often be lower unless you've got great content. And you will see the ones that you paid for reach more people. How convenient. Yes, we're playing in Facebook's playground. They make the rules, and they made the rule that it's going to be harder to reach people unless you pay. But at least starting out with a dollar could be very uh, powerful. And this is a huge topic to, to get into, which it's better over for the other class, but I wanted to touch on here that on this this social network, this is the way you, you run it. 
in that you're still going to be sharing content, promoting yourself. But now, to be using it seriously, we're going to think about boosting, paying some amount of money to reach an audience. Any questions on the general concept of using Facebook? Okay, let's um, take one more break and then we'll, we'll go on. It's 7.50, um, we'll take a break until 8. And then we'll